This video explains the stack hunt, a common game in game theory. What is the stack hunt? In the stack hunt, there are two players who need to decide whether to go after a stack or a hare. If both players go after the hare, they each get a payoff of 40. If both players go after the stack, then they each get a bigger payoff, say 45. If one player goes after the hare and the other player goes after the stack, then the player that goes after the hare gets a, a small payoff of 35. And the person that goes after the stack has zero payoff because one person cannot hunt the stack on his or her own. So, so what should the players play? Notice that if play, player 1 believes that player 2 will, will play stack, then, then player 1 should play stack as well because the payoff uh, from playing stack is 45, which is bigger than, than the payoff from playing hair, which is 35. Likewise, if player 1 believes that player 2 will, will play hair, then player 1 should play hair as well because the payoff is 40 from playing hair compared to a payoff of playing 0 from playing stack. And the same concept applies when player 2 is thinking about player 1's actions. If, if player 2 believes that player 1 should uh, will play stack, then player 2 should play stack as well. And if player 2 believes that player 1 will play hair, then player 1 should play hair as well. Hence, this game is known as a coordination game. So let's take a look at the Nash equilibrium in this game. There, there's a total of two Nash equilibria in pure strategy. The first is if both players play, play stack. Notice if both players play, play stack, neither player has an incentive to deviate and play hair because that means a lower payoff for him or her. And if both player if both players play hair, then neither player has an incentive to deviate. Even though there are two Nash equilibria, it doesn't mean that both Nash equilibria are, uh, give, both, give both players the same pair. In fact, the first Nash equilibrium, Pareto dominates the, the, the second, because it gives a higher pair to both players compared to the Nash equilibrium of hair hair. So far, we've only co considered what happens if both players play a strategy deterministically. What if there's an, there's an element of chance? For example, um, players are alternating between both strategies, or player 1 believes that player 2 will play a certain strategy with probability p, so if player 1 believes that player 2 will play stack with probability p, the expected payoff of player 1 himself playing stack is 45 times p plus 0 times 1 minus p because if you play stack with probability p, you play hair with probability 1 minus p since there's only two strategies in this game. And the expected payoff is 45p. Then the expected payoff of player 1 playing hair is 35 times p plus 40 times 1 minus p, which is 40 minus 5p. Hence, player 1 should play stack if 45p is greater than 40 minus 5p. And if you were to do the calculations, you would find that p must be at least 0.8. One can also do analogous calculations to show that player 2 should play stack if and only if he believes player 1 will play stack with a probability of at least 0.8. And by doing a little bit more maths, one can show that if both players play stack 80% of the time and have 20% of the time, then we have something called a Nash equilibrium in mixed strategies. So one important question is, do payoffs matter? 
And the answer is yes. Mm, three economists, Battaglio, Samuelson, and Van Hook, did an experiment where they had subjects play the stack hand game. And each subject was assigned to one of three, three groups, and the payoffs differed across groups. So they cleverly manipulated the payoffs across the, the, the three groups. Let's, let's take a look at the payoffs of, of the three groups and their Nash equilibrium. So the first thing we, we notice is, is, is that in all groups, the game had two pure strategy Nash equilibrium, which is stack stack and hair hair. And all also have one mixed strategy Nash equilibrium where both players play stack 80% of the, the time and hair 20% of the time. So the proper, the proportions are equal across all groups. And with a little bit of maths, one can show that the expected pair is 36 across all groups. However, notice that the incentive for choosing optimally is largest in group 1 and smallest in group 3. What do I mean by, by that? Notice that if player 2 in group 1 were to choose stack, then the incentive for choosing the correct action is um, 10 for player 1 because he gets a pair of 45 into a pair of 35. Likewise, if player uh, 2 chooses to, to play hair, then the incentive to player 1 for choosing the right action is 40. Similarly, the incentive for player 1 to choose correctly in group 2 is 5 if player 2 plays stack and 20 if player 2 chooses hair, which is slightly smaller than that of group 1. And the incentive to choose correctly is even smaller in, in group 3, being 3 and 12 for stack and hair respectively. So group 1 subjects have the largest incentive to choose the best action and group 3 subjects have the smallest incentive to choose the right action. And as predicted, group 1 subjects behavior became predictable the fastest. That means after they played several rounds of the game, it became easy, easier and e easier to predict the, the strategy that group that group one subjects would play on the next round. However, it took a longer time be before the experimenters could predict the behavior of subjects in group two and group three. Moreover, another interesting phenomenon is that across all three groups, group one subjects were the most likely to converge on consistently playing hair hair and group three subjects were the least likely to converge on um, hair hair suggesting that players were risk averse. 